Hi guys, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be doing the highly requested stats video. These are the things that I've done throughout high school that have gotten me into colleges like BU, which is where I'm committed to, Colgate, Penn State, Binghamton, etc. with some scholarships as well. Also, I just seem to forget to include the most important piece of information, the fact that I'm majoring in environmental analysis and policy. Minor-wise, I'm not sure. It's either going to be French studies or public relations. I don't know how I forgot that. So I'm going to be breaking this video down into a couple of parts so that it's a bit more comprehensible and understandable. So today's video will be consisting of my academics, including standardized testing, APs, and my regular grades, etc. The second category will be my extracurriculars, so what I've done outside of school, including clubs, my own personal ventures. Last, we're going to be talking about essays and supplements because I believe that they are extremely crucial and important to an application, and I'd like to give you guys some tips as well. So with that being said, let's get into so, it. To start off with academics, I'll start off by talking about standardized testing because the rules have been bent a little, I guess you could say, with this cycle and COVID and everything. Personally, I am not a standardized testing person. I took the SAT probably like three times max and I was never satisfied with my scores. And that does not reflect who I am as a person and I don't need a standardized test to tell me that. But for someone like me, I didn't submit my scores and I was totally fine and the process still worked out for me. I believe the highest I scored on the SAT was probably a 1310. Got 1310 on the SAT and I'm still successful. So I promise you the SAT is not everything, especially with COVID, it's not worth everything. It's editing Gwen and I just wanted to add a little note saying that if you did do well on the SAT, submit your score, please go ahead and do it. But if you believe that your SAT score is going to cause you more harm than good, don't submit your SAT score. Play it safe. And yeah, when I was in these Zoom sessions with all these admissions counselors, they said to only submit your score if you believe it it's going to help you. And yeah, that's my advice. Regarding APs, so in total, I have five APs under my belt. I took two APs during my junior year, AP Environmental Science and AP Lang. I scored a four on both of those tests. I believe that taking APES, AP Environmental Science, was really crucial into me finding my major. And I also think it reflects how interested I am in the major that I applied to. So you could see how a class, a rigorous class your junior year contributes to how colleges see your dedication to your major. Currently, I'm in my senior year. I'm taking three APs, AP French, AP Biology, and AP Calc AB. For some reason, I decided to challenge myself this year and take a whole slew of APs during my senior year, which I wouldn't say I'd recommend, but I think it has definitely helped me with the transition into a bit more rigorous work. But I would like to say that throughout ninth and 10th grade, I did take honors classes specifically in English and French. So I was challenged in that manner, but I did not start APs until junior year. And that's totally fine. And that's so okay if you're late to the head start. One thing about me is that I have stayed consistent with my grades. I am in like the AA plus region. Okay. So I do have my GPA. My weighted GPA is a 98 out of 100. Emphasis on the weighted. I really take classes that I think will fit me, not classes that will look good on the Common App. I wanna take stuff that I know that I can excel in and do well in and not do something because I wanna look good in college because that doesn't mean everything. Okay, so next we can get into activities slash extracurriculars. I feel like this is where my profile stood out a bit more and it showed other sides of me. What colleges want to see is that you're versatile and flexible. So if I'm majoring in environmental science, they also want to see something else from me so that they can see the variety within the things I do in my day-to-day -day life. The number one thing that I listed, this goes in list of importance. So the first thing that I listed was my small business, which is the silver lock. I basically, am the owner of this small business. I started it probably the summer going into junior year and I've continued it throughout. You can check it out, link in bio. And that was my number one activity. That's what I spent most of my time doing and that was an independent activity. The second thing I did was community service, specifically at my library. My library offers a bunch of programs. So I did some community service regarding working with little kids. I did a lot of reading and I did a lot of Zoom programs online, which counted towards volunteer hours but a bulk of my volunteer hours from the library came from 
book reviews. I think as most of you guys know, I am a bookworm at heart. I'm trying to read 100 books this year. So I have read a lot of books and through my library, they have a volunteer program where people can sign up to write book reviews and you get community service hours out of that as they are posted onto an online website. So I spent most of my summer writing book reviews and I love writing. I like writing when it's a personal thing, when no one's forcing you to follow up prompt, you can just freely write. And I think that's so important. So if you are a bookworm, I highly recommend finding some form of volunteer program that offers hours in exchange for book reviews because I feel like it's very efficient and you also get to express your opinion, etc. Okay, getting into clubs at my school. Each year I've been really consistent. I do two clubs a year. It's honestly, to get into National Honor Society at my school, you need to have two clubs a year minimum. I'm editing again. This time I'm not editing with makeup on. I think it's pretty obvious, but I forgot to talk about the honors section in the Common App. So that's basically where you list any awards you've gotten or honor roll, National Honor Society. So for me, that was basically school recognized honor roll, National Honor Society, and French National Honor Society. I mainly focused on my extracurriculars where I had a officer position. So for example, I was in the Water for Life Club as a social media manager. And also I am an officer of the French National Honor Society Society, which I think also may have set out in my application. I think it's unique being able to speak a second language that is not native to you. And if your school offers any language programs, I highly recommend taking them because language is such a great way to talk to people, converse, meet new people, and express yourself as well. So yeah, I am still currently an officer. I've been in photo club as well, just as a regular member. I just added that on. That's pretty much it for my activities. I did not participate in a sport. I think what helped my application was that I had really niche clubs and really niche activities like a small business owner, social media manager, and an officer for French National Honor Society. Like that's something I'll repeat on and on throughout this video is to find your niche. I think it's so important. And even if it's a smaller club compared to let's say a big club like pre-med society or dog rescue club. I think that small clubs have an equal importance. I think with smaller clubs, you get a lot of uniqueness and you can show your diversity and all the things you participate in throughout high school. Okay, and regarding writing, supplements, my Common App. I will not be speaking about my Common App. I will not be talking about what I wrote because it's personal. I'm not discriminating people who share their Common App essays. I just believe for me personally, my Common App was really, really, really personal and really important. And I don't feel comfortable sharing that with you guys and I'm sorry. My main recommendation is to just truly be yourself. Don't act like you're a business person writing an essay and don't act like someone who you aren't because college admissions officers will pick up on that. You need to stick true to yourself, tell your story, follow a prompt, or just honestly free write and you should be set. I think something that definitely helped me with my Common App and my supplements was the fact that I read a lot. I have read a lot of books within the past few years, junior and senior year, and I feel like that has definitely contributed to my writing style. I feel that my writing style has become more sophisticated and especially the way I converse with people. I think reading just adds to your vocabulary and just adds to who you are overall. And I would say comparing my writing style to maybe freshman year, my junior year and senior year writing has been a lot more advanced and it's just something I picked up from reading. Regarding my supplement for BU, if you're interested, the supplement is YBU. It's such a broad statement. So my recommendation for that is to start with a small topic. You can find your small topic by searching on the BU website or going to a Zoom meeting with admissions officers or just talking to someone who is a student at the college you want to apply to. And after you find that unique topic, I want you to transition it to basically an overall message, an overall message that the school you want to go to really represents and really prides itself in. But I hope my advice helps in which you transition from a small topic to an overall message, an overarching message that shows that you belong at the college, especially if you are given a supplement like why blank. And that is basically it for my video. I am so sorry that this video has taken so long to produce and film. I just needed to get everything together, get my chapters together, and really just have good advice to give to you guys because going through this process was a little hard. And I wanna give you guys really good and set advice that can help you throughout the process. And obviously my stats will maybe not apply in your application, but that was just a good rubric as to how I got into the schools that I got into. But my number one tip is to be unique and be you. And also that grades and academics are not everything, especially with the pandemic where standardized testing is optional. They really wanna see who you are as a person and what you like and how you express yourself outside of school. And I think that's something you should discover throughout your years at high school. And it's something I have definitely done. So 
With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the stats video. Your SAT grade does not mean everything. Coming from someone who didn't submit their SAT grade, I know the college process seems daunting and scary, but I promise everything will work out. The universe is looking out for you. As I always say, your path will unfold and I am wishing you nothing but the best and good luck.